Welcome to Magical Women and this extra special magic presentation in collaboration with Monday Night Magic out of New York City. We are very grateful to Monday Night Magic, Grace Chang, and David Corsero for permitting us to upload this talk. Now sit back, relax, and see for yourself why Grace Chang holds a winning hand. The person I'm introduced, she's an Asian American performance artist. She's been a puppeteer. She's been behind the camera. She starred in award-winning winning films. She was raised in Beijing, and but actually studied theater here in the United States. She's part of actually a third generation family of performers. Her father and uncle were sort of considered the Abbott and Costello or the Marx Brothers of China. She grew up watching them, learning from them, performing at a very young age, um, performed in like a Cirque du Soleil type theater show doing magic, and even then came to New York and began acting. And she actually played the role of a notorious mistress in the 1993 film, The Joy Luck Club. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Grace Chang. Hello, Grace. How are you? Good, good. It's such an honor to be on the Monday Night Magic Show. It's it's an honor for us to bring you on the show. So if it's okay, Grace, what I'd like to do, I, yeah. I have a lot of questions for you. But before yeah. we do that, I actually want to show a short clip uh, to our audience of you performing. Is that okay? Good. Yes. All right. We're going to come back to talk to Grace in one second. In the meantime, check this out, everybody. Thank you. So beautiful. So beautiful. Grace, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. That's the so, most difficult trip, trick. I took can imagine. Seven years, seven years to practice. Did that, it really? Yeah, seven years. To perform on stage. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's hard enough to do manipulations, but to have it with fire and everything else like that takes it to a whole nother level, doesn't it? And it's real wax. If you get close enough, you smell the wax. <laughs> Which I don't think anybody, you know, I think even our non-magician friends at home would understand that yeah. one's false move and you got hot wax dripping on your hands. <laughs> not fun if you make a mistake. Right. <laughs> so, Grace, what I want to talk about really quickly here is I want to talk sort of first off about your family. Can you give everybody sort of just a quick introduction to what it was like having a father and an uncle being so popular in China as sort of that Abbott and Costello? <laughs> Well, to me, I grew up with all the famous people in and out of my home. So I never really realized it <clears throat> until, you know, much later and as I got older. And uh, so to me, it was just a part of the life. You know, this is my, my grandfather who did Cuban tube. And they combined the opera, magic and dancing and singing all together into the Xiang Sheng Ko. It's like the Abba, Abba Costello type of a show. Yeah. Since I was uh, five years old, I watched my father. This is my father in the first, one of the first uh, black and white uh, movies in China. Wow. So my father on the right side. <laughs> they said I look like my father a lot. <laughs> yeah, I always watch him create his own shows. So uh, he always created different show. This is my grandfather with his four sons who mm. later all become big stars in China. The the Mushroom Brothers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, in China. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and 
So, so you did not, I mean, a lot, a lot of magicians sort of get exposed to magic earlier on, but you got exposed to a variety of different types of, of performance artists. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that sort of led you to sort of, uh, cause I know sort of your expertise is not just in magic, whether it's acting, puppeteering, directing. So I'm sure all of that exposure really early on influenced and helped grew all those different components of your life. Yes. Yes, yes. I love to, uh, you know, create, uh, especially storytelling, and I incorporate incorporate in magic with the storytelling. That's why I added uh, puppetry and I added, you know, other things into the uh, the the magic. You know, I made into little plays, and you know, uh, even when I did the black art ma magic, we always not just uh, create something. Uh, I was, can we create a fish and maybe fish can dance with us or maybe the fish has personality. Is there any way we do that? So they're always <laughs> find something, maybe a naughty, I don't know. <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> yes. There it is. Yeah, these are the uh, the fish. We, uh, it's all hand painted and handmade. Um, I have to thanks uh, Peter Samuelson who helped me to create this, uh, you know, black art magic, and and also Bob Fish and um, Lee Leland and Jack McBride. They also often help me on my shows. Each time I create new shows, <laughs> here's Jinji and the Dragon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote a book about this little dragon, so I created into a three dimensional <laughs> creature, so the audience can see it. I mean, it's so magical to sort of see people reacting to what you've put on stage because it's not just yeah. magic. It, you're right. It's an entire piece of theater, a piece of storytelling that all gets weaved together. Yeah. Look, I asked him to dance with me after post. He said no. <laughs> so I gave him a blow kiss. Blow, blow kiss. Yeah. Now he dances. <laughs> so would you say, would you say that having all of those different elements, the directing, the puppeteering, the acting, did all those, did all that element of creativity flow into your magic to make your magic a little bit different and unique? I think in um, every way, it could be helping me on the magic, the magic helped me on the movies and uh, creating, you know, a storytelling, creating films and every way, I guess, uh, you know, it's somehow, um help each other you know it really uh it just maybe to me i just i'm a restless person who love to create <laughs> and never you know rest <laughs> that's it that's exactly so now that that sort of restlessness that you talked about is do you think that's what sort of drove you from going from china to new york uh yeah i always love america <laughs> I love China too, but uh, yeah, I always felt like I should see the other side of the world. So I came, I had a dream. So here I am. When, when, what age did you come over to the United States? Um, uh, late teens, about 20 years old. Were you, were you nervous sort of being that, I mean, that's still pretty young to sort of walk into a new country and, and have this attitude of sort of making a name for yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, when I was in my early 20s, I tried to get a job at the mostly uh, night magic, mm -hmm. most, mostly magic, mostly magic. And I walked in, and the owner, I forget his name now, and he says, Iman. Oh, this is our oh, Umar, right? Yes, Iman. Yes. yes, and he said, This is for professionals, mm. and it's like this young girl, you know, is dreaming to perform here, and I said. Oh, I'm a professional. Oh, show me your tape. So I brought a tape and he saw it. He was like, okay, you can start right away. <laughs> Wearing Chinese outfit. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This is the 10th anniversary of most okay. magic. I was there in Chinese outfit. <laughs> there you are. So yeah. for those of you who don't know, Mostly Magic was sort of the Monday Night Magic before Monday Night Magic was Monday Night Magic. Mm -hmm. Long-running show in New York, really popular. Yeah. I mean, 
all the magicians from all over the world would want to go and perform there. And here you are, Grace, just sort of walking in and, and getting to perform at Mostly Magic. And I knew nobody <laughs> just walked in. So. And then so you started performing at Mostly Magic. Then you actually started running sort of a theater in New York, correct, for the yes. Asian American community? Yes. I created my own shows. I always dreamed to have a full show of my own. So I created several of them to give uh, with the story in it. And I gave shows to the New York community. And the most popular area is in Brooklyn. <laughs> and uh, I gave sh uh, shows to public uh, libraries, Brooklyn Public Library. So if they knew Great Chang is coming, they will come. <laughs> I'm kind of known in that area. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and I all these beautiful costumes I created together with costume makers and I just, it just made me, uh, you know, I just look this hat piece. <laughs> it was a three Peking opera hats, you know, hat piece and put it together, yeah. with one gigantic hat piece. <laughs> so. Um, what I, Grace, what I find so fascinating is that yeah. when you were, when you were in Beijing, it sounds as though yeah. your, your family Mm -hmm. didn't just focus on themselves. They created theater that could bring in other performers. Mm -hmm. and, and here you are coming to the United States, trying to make a name for yourself. And your first thought was to figure out a way to run a theater to help other people as well. Yeah, to, to, to bring live shows to the community. I noticed a lot of uh, Americans, a lot of children especially, really don't have a chance to see live shows. And mm. But bringing live shows to them, they're like, oh, great Chang, you made my day. <laughs> so that's, you know, make me, you know, especially when I create a little puppies, you know, Jin Jin the Dragon. You want to see him? Yeah, please. I mean, uh, you know. All right. Is well, I brought right there? It. Yeah. Hi, Jin Jin. <laughs> Hi, David. <laughs> that's David, our host. Really? Yeah, of course. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So can you do a magic? Magic? Yeah. Okay. Watch me. Okay. <coughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, an egg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't tell me. This is the fake one. No, it's real. Is real? Shall we crack it? Yeah, go crack. Okay. I take nap. Okay. <laughs> take nap. Yeah. Bye. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if this egg is real or not. Let's see. One, two, three. Ooh! Real egg! <laughs> So great the way you sort of combine all of these different these different elements together. Can, you know, I, I want to bring up Dennis in a second, Grace, but before I do, can you just talk for a minute about sort of your acting directing side? I mean, you were in the Joy Luck Club, which was a, a very, very popular movie that I'm sure many of our audience has seen. If not, it's absolutely fantastic. Everyone should go check it out. Talk about what it's like to sort of bring that eye, the acting directing eye to the magic that you create. The acting, directing eye. Oh, could you explain it? <laughs> well, so here's what I mean. Like, so there's a certain skill involved in being an actress, right? Yes. And oh. there's another certain skill that involves being a director. And I'm, I sort of want to hear about how you took those two skills that mm -hmm. made you very successful in both of those areas. Yeah. But applied them to the type of theater and magic that you put on. I see. Well, I think <clears throat> it's just constantly study, study, absorbing. If you want to, uh, you know, to be a movie actress, you need to study. You want to learn to be director, to create, become a filmmaker, and you need to to study. You need to go to, you know, like conventions and you know, a film festival to study it, and, and then and do it yourself. You know, if you want to. Uh, uh, to be a puppeteer, you go, you, like Andy Warhol saying, you show up, you, you know, show up. want to do yep. something, 
something, if you show up, you can make it. Anybody can make it, not just myself, David. I'm just trying to tell everyone that if you want to do something, you set up your mind to do it, you will be able to do it if you make your first step. And you know so, what? That's, yeah. that's a fantastic piece of advice yeah. to everybody at home, the young magicians wanting to watch. Grace is the perfect living example of this. If you set your mind to it, if you want to do it, show yeah. up, get to work immediately. Because, you know, Grace has been extremely successful in so many different facets of her life. And as like she's saying, why? Because she had a goal and yeah. she showed up. Yeah, just show up. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Grace. Really appreciate it. If anybody wants to learn a little bit more about Grace, you can go to gracechang.com or at Grace Chang is here. That's her social media. You can go find out a little bit more about her. Highly recommend you Google, check out some of her video clips. There's really some incredible magic out there. Check her out in the Joy Luck Club, an incredible performance there. Grace, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, David. And, and it was nice to meet you all, all the audience. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Grace Chang, everybody. That was fantastic. Oh, see, that's the kind of thing. We always have incredible guests stopping by here. You're not, you don't just see incredible magic, but you get to meet and go behind the scenes of some of the living legends of magic as well. I hope that you enjoyed this talk as much as I did. And thanks again to Grace, David, and Monday Night Magic. Did you subscribe and hit the notifications bell? Come on, you can do it. If you hit the notifications bell, you'll be aware of uploads when they happen in real time. And don't forget to comment. We love to hear from you.